boy. Uh, welcome back, folks. I'm thrilled this next man is here. He's a legendary guitarist. He's been recording music for over 40 years and really had a major hand in shaping what is called the Nashville Sound. He's won eight Grammys. He's playing a song called I'll Say She Does. Please welcome Mr. Chet Atkins. It's so great to watch musicians watch other musicians. You had them hanging on every note over there, the guys. They, well, it's a little different, you know. I <laughs> brought some of that finger-picking Nashville you, music out You here. do it all right. This, this new album, let me ask you about it. It's called CGP. Is that some secret code here? What, what is that? That's a degree I gave myself. You know, I'm a, I'm a dropout, and I, what I really wanted was a, a Ph.D. from Vanderbilt. Yeah. I gave myself a CGP, which is a uh, certified guitar player. <laughs> You're around presenting that degree? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. For my friend. You know, there, there's a lot going on, been going on in the news the last couple of years uh, about various ministries that have gotten in trouble with, with funds and all that. You did a song a while ago that, that's pretty apropos today. What, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I was talking to the girl about that. Uh, would Jesus wear a Rolex? I wrote that... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I wrote that with Margaret Archer, um, and it was a hit by Ray Stevens. And I had a new opening that I, I wrote after Jimmy Swaggart got in trouble, but uh, 
I don't like to kick a man when he's down, so uh, okay, well, I don't we'll... know if I want to repeat that. <laughs> well, it's up to you. If you'd rather not, we Well, we wrote a new opening, Go like uh, I got up this morning, looked at my television screen there, and Living Color was a very familiar scene. Another TV preacher admitting he had done wrong, I scratched my head and wondered, should I write another song? <laughs> and uh, would he wear a Rolex, would he wear a swatch? Would he participate or would he rather watch? <laughs> I wrote that, uh, I wrote that uh, thinking that I'd get uh, Ray Stevens to do a, a number two uh, version, and uh, he said no, so I didn't write, oh. any, write anymore. Now, do you, we have hot dogs, we have cake, and also we can fix you some rabbit if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Chet, you, you know, I'm sure you know Dan because uh, yes. you two work for... Have you ever seen this, this, this former distinguished anchor man uh, looking like... I kept thinking if Irving could see him now. Oh, that's the man who... Irving Wall, yeah. his former boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'd love it. I think you're out of news for good, Dan. That's just my... I hope they just didn't just tune in and see me sitting here like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I use the I use the expression the Nashville Sound, uh, and I don't even know that I know what I mean when I say that. I, and I lived there for years, and there's some great music comes out. Are you able to put a definition or a handle on on what it is? Uh, no, it it evolved though because Owen Bradley and myself we were just trying to uh, keep our job, trying to keep from getting fired. <laughs> and the way you do that is surprise the uh, friends and neighbors with every record you put out. And in doing that, you come up with different things and. Uh, if there's a Nashville sound, it's probably the rattle of money or something. <laughs> kind of an amalgam, I yeah. guess. Uh, when you were signing people to RCA, what were, who were some of the people you signed to that label? Oh, uh, Drop some names. Dolly Parton and uh, Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson, Jerry Reed, Charlie Pride. People not, not, like that. Yeah, yeah, not a bad little list. Had a lot of good luck. Yeah, well, it's, it may be a little more than that. Anyway, I don't know how you do it. You just keep sounding better and better. It's great having you here. Chet Atkins, folks. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Thank you. 